Hi, this short video will demonstrate how to design a single steel beam using the free beam designer. So just start the master series and if your date is out of date you can just download a new version and install it over the top. And now we choose to start in free trial or free beam designer limited mode and say OK. And here we go, our programs. Um, utilities such as libraries, um, resources such as the manuals and any updates to the software and some licensing options which we don't need to worry about. So back to programs and Beam Designers Steel Beams. So it's giving you a little welcome and I'm going to take a brand new file called demo 101 and create new. Off it goes and it gives me a single span beam. Now don't worry if it gives you a, a, a three span beam, just delete the second and third spans by deleting the third and then the second because this is the free beam designer. I'm going to change my default section from being a 43 to a 275, in fact 355 and we'll pop that down to something more realistic for um, basic work. Um, 254146 and just say close. We're going to put a dead load of 15 from a wall and a live load of 2.5 times 2, 5 kilonewtons. And we'll say it's spanning 6 meters. At the minute it's got columns and end fixed, it will not worry about that. We can also at this point in time go and change from BS to Euro code and make sure we're using the UK National Annex. And there we go, there's our load factors. And yes, we do want a serviceability live load only loading case. And now I want to get rid of the columns, so go to my supports and say no upper columns and then remove the lower columns, put those to zero and change the, the fixity. Now that I've done all this, and we don't worry about the column size because it's not important, now that I've done all this, I can come out and say use this as the default for a new beam. So using that as a default, I can come out of the program and I go back in and I start a brand new file, beam or demo 102, 102, and create, and it has all the properties set previously. So I'll accept those two values. What I will do is put a point load in the middle. So under point loads, I'm going to go span one, and I'm going to put a 25 kilonewton point load at. It's a 6 meter span, I'm going to put that 2.2 meters along. Uh, we're not really seeing the loading. So I'm going to change this to be 4 displays because that's actually better again um, than 2 up and I should have saved that as part of that default saving. So there's my point load. I'm going to put a second one on span 1 of 25 again. This will be at 4 metres, so 2.2 and 4, which gives me an 1800 gap. And we can see the two values here. Now, if we just move objects about, we can move the objects, we can move the deflections, we can move the point loads and the UDLs, and we can even ask for values to be input onto those, and those are the ultimate values. And we'll take off the density, so we won't show the density, the density is automatically applied in the analysis but we just won't show it here because it doesn't make sense to show it and everything else is fine so we got a 198 kilonewton meter moment a 119 shear force so all we now do is come along and say design very straightforward it is failing but we need to tell it first of all where it's restrained, how it's restrained. So we're going to assume that it is not fully restrained but at the standard 1L 
And then we're going to assume the two point loads do the actual restraining. So lateral restraints will be at 2.2 and then 1.8 further along. And we can now see the different regions. Coming back to the section, we can now walk up through the sections. And we can see the sections are getting close. It's working in here for capacity, but not for between those two restraints for buckling. It's also deflection is just about okay. And there we go with 305, 127, 48. Now, first of all, we may not like the 127. And secondly, we may not like the depth. So what we can do is we can sort by depth, or sorry, by weight order. And now we can see our sections coming up in kilograms. So we'll come down to about the 25. And we'll see what happens here as we go up through the 33s, the 37s, the 39, 406 by 39, so quite deep. If I needed to keep it shallower, I would have a wee look and say, well, let's try this 305. Yes, the 305, 165, nice wide flange. The same depth is going to give me a better solution. And I'll just check my other two portions, and that is it done. So I actually didn't put in a third portion, so I would should have put in a third portion at uh, 2 metres, because it's a 6 metre span, and now I can see all three portions. Now, the next thing to think about is deflections. At the minute, my deflection limit is 1 over 360 on my live load only deflection. So we're looking at case 2 for deflections and case one for ultimate. So we're just doing the two loadings, the live load only. If I want to change that to 3,250 uh, because it's not as critical, or if I want to say it's got glazing, one over 500, I could do so. And I can check those items. So that's my beam design, very straightforward, very simply. Now what I can also do is I could ask the program to do it for me. And it has found this 406 by 39, one kilogram lighter works, but I prefer that one. If I go back to depth and choose auto, the 305, 127 by 48, quite heavy, is the first section that works. Now I do have other recourses. I could take this and say, well, let's try a slightly lesser section, the 254. And we've got a failure, but let's then apply a bottom plate, or a top plate, a top plate. So top plate we're going to give for a 10mm plate, and we're going to make that 200 wide. And see if that has any effect. And you'll see that it's not really helping. So 12mm plate. It's going to work. So a 12 mil plate, 200 wide, will strengthen that 2541463 to be sufficient uh, on the design. So a 200 plate welded is all we need. So that is how simple it is to use the simple free steel beam designer. <laughs>